Hey guys, I figured I'd do something a little bit different with this video and show you my process of animating some rough animation in real time. Um, with this one I was kind of improvising a lot of it, it wasn't very structured and I figured that would be a good opportunity to show some of my thought process. So I'm going to be giving commentary on what I'm thinking as I go through this recording and it should be quite interesting. So I'm going to start the recording now. And so we start with a blank page. I've just been working on this project called Pandora. Pandora is a commission project by a music duo called Yuku and Lily. Their music is really nice. I'll leave a link to it in the description. And yeah, we're gonna have a music video coming out in the near future on their channel. So definitely subscribe to them and follow them and listen to their music. It's about this kid and his group of friends and they're taking on this massive bear. A big giant bear that's out of control, raging and very dangerous. The way I start this animation is um, with an intention. And the way I draw, I can't, um, I can't visualize what's gonna be on the screen before I draw. I have to put something down first so I'm just here I'm just trying to get that first pose down um, and from there I can actually think some more and I and it starts to informs the next part of my um, decision making process I suppose the intention right now is for this kid to run at the bear and do a dive roll kind of through the bears legs because I was in the storyboarding phase, I decided to change the angle. So I basically reanimated this dive forward roll from a different angle. And that meant that for this version of the dive roll, I was free to do whatever I wanted. So I thought it would be nice to animate the character changing direction after he gets out of the roll. It stopped being about the animation I was making it for and just started being a little test on its own. It's not a great drawing so far, but there's that's fine. In fact, I, I'm kind of experienced enough to expect that. I expect that this first drawing isn't going to be all that great. It's not going to be spectacular, and it's not really trying to be spectacular. As long as it gets across the intention, then it works. There I just skewed it forwards a little bit because I realized his, his forward momentum wasn't enough. It was too upright. And so by skewing it like that, it makes it a lot more dynamic. It puts the weight in front of him. So he's almost like, you know, like uh, running, they say running is like f continuous falling. And with each forward step, you're catching yourself. So that's um, what I was doing there. And I think it, that made it look a lot better when I skewed it forwards. I'm keeping it really simple as well for this shot. It's just on a kind of side plane. And also, I've made I made up my mind before animating this that it would be um, the camera would be following him. So there's a slightly different approach there, and that makes it a lot more fluid because it means that I can just kind of focus on the motion, and um, I know that the camera is going to be trained on him. Uh, it makes everything a little bit more fluid. Um, I don't have to worry so much about things like the ground. Um, yeah, uh, there I just put in some horizontal lines to indicate the ground, and I de deliberately made the, the the lines horizontal to reflect the direction that he's going in. So it's almost like speed lines, like speed blurs, and yeah, keeping everything really fast, really loose here. Um, in fact, I think I'm drawing a little bit faster than how I normally do, probably because I'm aware that this that I'm recording myself, so <laughs> trying to be a little bit faster because I, I know that people might be impatient, <laughs> uh, which is probably not a good thing that I'm doing that. Um, yeah, getting the, the thinking here about the locomotion of the legs, so thinking about especially that rear leg is... Um, it's, it can be quite tricky to do that. Here he's kind of like in between, he's still running, uh, he's taking that last step off his leg, but then he's also already entering the dive. 
Um, my animation teacher used to uh, get really annoyed at my drawings because he'd say that I, each of my drawings, they're not one definitive pose. They're doing um, a combination of both. But that's what makes the drawings fluid is the fact that they each drawing is in transition. It's not um, stationary on one thing. Like we're animating here. We're actually drawing movement. So for me personally, I like to draw things in a state of change. And I know that can be annoying for teacher but I like it so that if you pause it on a frame it's it looks like it's wanting to move like it's it's willing its way forward even though it's paused um, so here yeah thinking about the arc you know the, the fact that you know you take off and at the start of a dive forward roll you take off and you'll be aiming a little bit upwards and then that angle as you go through the air is going to shift and you're going to start to come back down and you're going to start to point downwards. Uh, looks like I'm taking a little pause here, I don't know why. I think for this recording I don't remember using reference. I think I was pretty overconfident in <laughs> my um, ability to animate this without reference, although I think the reason for that is that I, I've done gymnastics for a number of years, so I, it's very familiar to me what it feels like and how it moves when I do a dive forward roll. So I'm really just going off of that. That being said, I can always, already, just looking at this recording, I can see some of the mistakes, but I'm pretty sure I go back and fix those mistakes later. We're not going to have enough time in this video to see the entire process. But I, th I think that this early process of animating is the most interesting because as it gets further along, it just ends up being me refining the animation and making little tweaks here and there. And you don't really see any big revelations, any big changes. Um, yeah, with each line, you can see that each line is a curve. That's kind of my drawing style. But yeah, I like to build energy into a curve, so I use S curves and C curves for almost everything. Um, and you can also see that the um, the clothing lines I do, I add in like clothing folds, little seams and crinkles and stuff. And that's not really um, necessary, but I like to do it because it's actually a way for me to um, describe the form. Um, so that it's not just a completely flat 2D object um, and also to separate certain sections of the body like the legs from the waist in that example there. Okay, this is a really interesting pose here. I really enjoy doing this part of the dive forward roll because, um, yeah, again, it's in a state of change. He's hit the ground with the, with the, uh, the top half of his body, but the second half is still going along. Here I'm flaring the legs a little bit so they're not completely together and I feel like that is just a way for me to try to add a little bit of appeal to the drawing. Um, so I am trying to think of appeal, like how does it, can, can it look any nicer? Adding a little offset like that is always nice as well. When we're on a side plane like this, it's always risky that um, it looks 2D, looks flat. So any attempt that I have to offset the hands and the feet at all to make it just to demonstrate the three-dimensionality of the uh, character um, I will take that opportunity so I'm always trying to offset always trying to yeah not have the let's say the the front arm the arm that's in front relative to the camera make sure that the back arm isn't hiding behind that front arm um, that's what's going to really sell the fact that it's still 3D, even though we're on a side, a flat side angle here. Um, not really paying attention to the environment because I can only really think of one thing at a time when I'm doing these drawings. There's so many things to think of when you're doing this. So the, um, the ground, I just set it for that one frame and then I haven't really come back to it yet. The great thing about doing animation is that you can think of one thing and just concentrate on that and then you can come back to the other elements later on and fill them in. And that's 
how I animate everything. I try to just do do um, one things at a time. The more things you do, the harder it is to keep control of them. So just you can always go back and do more. Another thing you'll see me do is um, I often draw and don't get the proportions quite right, especially the overall propor proportions. You'll see the character grow and shrink sometimes, especially when it's a little bit more straight ahead, like how I'm animating here. Um, so what I do is just when I pick up on that, I realize it and I use the free transform tool. Just take the entire character and shrink him or, or adjust him in whatever way is necessary. Here I've actually gone back to the start of the animation, what was the start, and I'm actually expanding it so that there's more um, anticipation before the um, before the dive itself. Because we started it very soon before the dive, and I actually want to expand that and give him another step. And I think here I've also gotten the idea to um, to have him kind of swing from the side so um, he's doing this weird um, twist motion kind of hard to describe in words but you'll see it in a minute and yeah so remember that when you're animating you don't need to start at the beginning and then go through to the end you can also work backwards from where you are um, you can add things on to the uh, end or the beginning and you can you can actually animate back to front you can animate in reverse and that can create some really interesting things I used to have to think deliberately to do that but nowadays it's just kind of I've adopted it as like an instinctive thing where I can work um, forwards and backwards um, okay yeah now we've gone back to the the front again of the of the line of keyframes haven't done anything timing and spacing as well because that's going to follow later on and yeah so he's going further around in the role um, also just like my commentary my animations uh, method is to just do whatever takes my fancy in the moment um, because there's no real need to do a, a specific order of your keyframes you can do them in any order as long as you draw them eventually so I just do whatever I'm interested in at that moment. I've, if I want to draw the next drawing in the in the roll, I'll draw that. If I want to go back to the start and add more steps in, I'll draw them. So um, yeah, it's whatever I feel like really. Um, I'm leaving big gaps in uh, spacing between the keyframes. So you'll see that in that next drawing, he's gone quite a long way around in the roll compared to the previous drawing where he was still kind of just coming off of the dive itself. So there's mass, there's a massive gap there. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want there to be a big degree of um, freedom to adjust and add in-betweens between them. So I'm giving myself a lot of options by having that wide spacing. I have a lot of um, freedom later on to go back in add as many in-betweens as I see fit and adjust the spacing. Um, it just makes it very, uh, uh, how to describe it? It makes it very stretchy in the timeline for when I can, um, very ductile. I can uh, squash and stretch the, the, uh, the timing of the keyframes in the timeline later on if I've given wide spacing uh, in the actual drawings themselves. Um, I might have lost a few people there. Um, I kind of see it in an abstract way. Um, yeah, this I'm, I'm actually going into the hand, I guess, and just improving the gesture, improving the construction a little bit. I like to just noodle away on them, just fiddle a little bit to um, until they feel right. Um, I'd say even though the drawings are uh, rough here and they're very loose, a lot of them, the, the energy feels right. So I'm happy with that. But as soon as the energy doesn't feel right, I try to locate where that problem is and um, try to fix it by just, often just redrawing it does the trick. You don't have to um, get to the heart of it. You can, as long as you can identify, let's say an arm as looking wrong, then it's actually faster in this stage to not get to the heart of why it looks wrong, but just have a go at drawing it again. And often that works. Um, 
So yeah, here you can see I've gone back to the start of the animation and I'm in, I'm trying to incorporate a little twist so that the right arm, his right arm is kind of uh, hangs back a little bit and then kind of um, there's a sideways uh, aspect to it, a twist aspect to it. But I don't know yet whether that's going to work or not. I might take it out, I don't know, but it's good to try things like that. Um, anything that I feel boosts the energy, boosts the vigor of the pose, I'll try at this stage because I don't really have anything to lose at this stage. Going back again, doing another pose. Really loose, uh, very gestural, um, using those C, uh, the C lines and the S lines. I'll probably mostly use C lines for this because he's bent over a little bit. Um, but really I'm I'm pondering on what to do with the legs here because that's the tricky part. The legs are the legs are rooted in the ground like you can't have them sliding all over the place so it has to make sense what you're doing with the legs. It doesn't necessarily have to make sense um, with what you're doing with the arms but with the legs it it does. Um, they have to yeah they have they have to follow some kind of logic for how they're how they're working okay yeah and i then i hop back to the 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 front of the line of keyframes again because i'm just in that kind of mood where i can't keep concentration on one frame or i get an idea for some a frame somewhere else um yeah so here um i already knew from from my experience with gymnastics that if you're doing a dive roll and you want to continue running after the dive roll, it's important to to splay your steps. So you put one foot down first and then uh, keep the other foot up so that you can then turn that into a stride. I knew to do that. And I think it looks really appealing as well because again, you're offsetting the feet. They're not, there's not one foot hiding behind the other offsetting the hands as well you can see there um and yeah i know i draw the hair in as well and a lot of animators will look at that and just be like dude why are you drawing the hair in when you only when you're only doing the kind of thumbnail drawings for it but okay yeah i don't need to draw the hair in it's true and it will get erased later and added in because it's a secondary action but even so i enjoy drawing the hair and it it's just like an exciting outlet i think the hair is always exciting to draw it adds um some uh, the dynamic nature to it and it does give me notes for later on when i go to replace the hair it's like okay that's what i was thinking the hair was going to be like at that phase and yeah it's fun it's fun to draw the hair it does it takes hardly any time as well um it adds gesture to it and if I did want to give this as a thumbnail pass to someone it will look 10 times better because there's been just a few little sketch lines of the hair that will look 10 times better to someone I'm showing if I need to show it to someone before it's fully rendered. So those are my really weak reasons for adding hair but the truth is I just like drawing the hair I will draw it here in and it's no hindrance to me really um, okay yeah so the next shot the next pose here that I've been drawing um, he's so he's further along in the stride and what you can see here the important the most important thing to consider with that drawing was the um, the idea that the the right leg is going back therefore the right arm is going forward you want there to be um, so whenever the right leg is back the right arm should be forward whenever the right leg is forward the right arm should be back they should always be opposite to each other that is the key really to natural movement there are exceptions to that of course but um, by and large if it's any kind of walk or run that is a very very useful rule and it works very well So, yeah, I can't remember what I'm trying here. Um, yeah, just drawing the next pose um, in there. This is a tricky one. I think I'm spacing it pretty far apart here because there's, 
yeah, I'm, I'm skipping way far forward in this. Um, maybe too far forward, but we'll see where I'm going with it. Um, maybe I've just caught an idea that I want to put down. And yeah, this is like, it's thumbnailing and it's keyframe animation is kind of both. Because I thumbnailing, I suppose, in the traditional sense, the idea that people have of thumbnailing is that it's like on one sheet of paper and you just do a bunch of drawings on that same sheet of paper. So this isn't technically thumbnailing, it's technically rough animation, but I see it as like half and half. It's kind of halfway on the way to being a, a rough animation, but it's so loose and so uh, experimental that it's also like thumbnailing. And that's kind of come about because of traditional, um, this traditional way, like why put them all on one sheet where you can actually thumbnail uh, on different frames and get a sense for the how it plays in sequence as well. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, this drawing is not going great so far, but I'm just seeing what to salvage. Again, I need to just, I need to put something down before I can recognize how it should be or what, what isn't working, what is working. Um, it's like some uh, artists can draw and their mind is like a map. They have it mapped out. And then others, they draw and it's like they ha they don't have a map, they just have a compass. So the compass just points in a certain direction and they have to just navigate the landscape as, as it comes to them, as they are able to see it. They don't have that overview of how it's going to look. And I've tried and tried to develop that um, way of visualizing in my mind's eye what it's actually going to look like, but it's always fuzzy. And it doesn't really matter how much I try, I just, it's always going to be fuzzy. Um, until I put it down on the page. So that's what I'm doing here. Okay, we're gonna get to the end of this recording soon. I've been just talking, um, <laughs> talking away. And yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't, I can't keep this up for like the entire animation process, but newsflash for you, animation is a long process. I'm animating fast here. I'm going at a breakneck speed doing these drawings. And it still feels slow as a YouTube video, so just trying my best, really. You can see also that I'll just make a little a little part of a sketch. I might even just draw a leg or something, and then I'll drag and drop it. The free transform tool is so useful for this. So I can just concentrate on gesture, on whatever limb it is, or if it is the entire body, and then I can think, okay, is it in the right place? And that's a really important decision. And I'd rather have that as like a secondary decision. Um, is it in the right place? That comes after, is it the right pose? Or is the gesture correct? Um, is it leaning well, you see? And then I'll think, okay, where can I place it that makes sense? And because this is a moving camera, it's also like relative to the camera. So there are two movements here because it's a moving camera there are two types of movements that i'm thinking of there's the screen movement which is where the character is relative on the screen so right now he's on screen left and then he goes to screen right that's happened naturally but also the camera is moving from left to right in the 3d space so um i'm trying to like get a grasp of that in my mind um, just by shifting about the drawings. Like right now, the the drawings themselves are going from screen left to screen right. But I might change that so that it's more centered, so that it it's always on screen left or it's always in the center screen. Um, you have the freedom to do that if you choose to have a moving camera. And, and drawing the backgrounds, that is, which I will do because that's how I do most of my action shots, uh, fast paced ones. Okay, yeah, I'm now I'm scrubbing through. I've actually, um, I'm surprised at how little I've scrubbed through um, so far. I've really just gone with my vision on it. Normally I would scrub through on the first three drawings that I make, I'd be scrubbing like 10 times at least. But here I started scrubbing through on like, I don't know, maybe eight drawings, nine drawings. 
here I've kind of thumbnailed the drawings that I thought would work, like just my instinct with it. And the next step is gonna be um, loads and loads of scrubbing, which is just watching it back. One thing will start to stand out to me and I'll aim to fix it or I'll change it in some way. And that's a repetitive process of just scrubbing, looking, identifying how it can be changed, how it can be improved, how it could be exaggerated, and then go and do that little change, scrub again, check that it worked. So anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that for this video, I think. And yeah, I hope this, this was insightful. I tried my best to um, say what I was thinking at the time. Um, there's probably a lot more I wish I could have said. So what you've just seen was the first 25 minutes of the animation process in real time. But I also recorded another hour and 20 minutes of me animating this. And that's what you're seeing here sped up. So. Let me know if you'd like to see me do the same kind of commentary on later parts of the footage and you can do that by leaving a like and a comment on this video. Thanks for watching, consider supporting me on Patreon, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, it's all about learning the art of animation. I'll see you in the next video, goodbye.